Have you ever wondered why society places such an intense pressure on new mothers to breastfeed? Is it truly the only best choice? Welcome to the world of breastfeeding dichotomy, a realm where societal expectations often clash with the realities of motherhood. We live in a time where breastfeeding is hailed as the gold standard in infant nutrition. It's promoted by health authorities worldwide as the optimal way to nourish a newborn. This perspective is backed by a wealth of research demonstrating the myriad health benefits that breast milk offers both infants and mothers. Yet, the flip side of this coin reveals a more complex picture. For some mothers, breastfeeding is a journey fraught with challenges. The inability to produce enough milk, painful latching or medical conditions can turn this natural process into a struggle. The societal pressure to breastfeed adds a layer of guilt and emotional turmoil to these physical difficulties. Mothers who can't breastfeed often grapple with feelings of inadequacy, fueled by the pervasive notion that formula feeding is a lesser choice. Yet for many, formula feeding is not a choice, but a necessity. This intense focus on breastfeeding raises many questions, and it's time to dive deeper into them. Breastfeeding versus formula feeding, a debate that has sparked controversy and divided opinions worldwide. Breastfeeding is often hailed as the gold standard of infant nutrition. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of a child's life, followed by continued breastfeeding supplemented with solids until at least a year old. And it's not hard to see why. Breast milk is a marvel of nature, a complex cocktail of nutrients, antibodies and growth factors that are tailor-made to meet a baby's needs. It's touted for its myriad health benefits for both the infant and the mother, from reducing the risk of infections and allergies in babies to promoting quicker postpartum recovery and even reducing the risk of certain cancers in mothers. Yet, the picture is not as rosy for every mother-baby duo. For some mothers, breastfeeding can be a painful, stressful and emotionally draining experience. Some may struggle to produce enough milk while others may have medical or practical reasons that make breastfeeding difficult or impossible. And that's where formula feeding comes in. Formula feeding is often seen as the second best option, the fallback when breastfeeding is not possible. But let's set the record straight. Formula is not a substandard choice. It is a safe, healthy and viable alternative that has nourished millions of babies worldwide. Modern infant formulas are scientifically designed to mimic breast milk as closely as possible, providing a balanced mix of nutrients necessary for a baby's growth and development. However, it's important to remember that the decision between breastfeeding and formula feeding is not a binary one. Many mothers successfully combine both, ensuring their babies get the best of both worlds. The choice between breastfeeding and formula feeding is personal and unique to each mother and child. There is no one-size-fits-all solution. While breastfeeding is beneficial, the risks of exclusive breastfeeding without adequate support and information can be significant. Let's delve deeper into the potential health risks for newborns associated with exclusive breastfeeding. These risks, though not always common, can be severe and are worthy of our attention. Firstly, consider the experience of Dr. Del Castillo Hedgi, a physician who co-founded the organization Fed is Best. After her newborn son suffered severe dehydration due to difficulties with breastfeeding, she became acutely aware of the dangers that can arise when breastfeeding doesn't go as planned. Dehydration in newborns can lead to serious complications such as kidney problems and even seizures. Next, let's discuss jaundice, a condition that causes yellowing of a baby's skin and eyes due to high levels of bilirubin, a substance produced by the liver. While mild jaundice is common in newborns and often resolves without treatment, severe jaundice can cause a type of brain damage known as connecteris if left untreated. Exclusive breastfeeding, particularly when the mother's milk is slow to come in, can increase the risk of severe jaundice. Lastly, we'll touch on hyperglycemia or low blood sugar, which can occur in newborns who aren't getting enough to eat. This can lead to seizures in the baby and long-term growth and development issues. Hyperglycemia is another potential risk of exclusive breastfeeding, especially if the mother is having difficulty producing enough milk. These potential health risks underline the importance of appropriate and informed support for mothers who choose to breastfeed. 
It's crucial that they understand the signs of these conditions and know when and how to seek help. They should also be made aware of safe and healthy alternatives to breastfeeding, such as formula feeding, to ensure their babies are getting the nutrients they need. The consequences of inadequate breastfeeding can be severe, and it's essential for mothers to be informed and supported in their feeding choices. Scene script. Healthcare providers play a crucial role in supporting mothers' feeding choices and ensuring the health and safety of newborns. It's important to understand that hospitals and doctors bear the responsibility of closely monitoring newborns. This is not just about the routine checks and measurements, but also about paying attention to signs of potential health issues, such as jaundice and hyperglycemia, which can be exacerbated by inadequate nutrition. Now let's talk about the information mothers receive about feeding options. Healthcare providers have a duty to present a balanced perspective on breastfeeding and formula feeding. While the medical benefits of breast milk are undeniable, it's equally important to acknowledge that not all mothers can or choose to breastfeed. And guess what? That's perfectly okay. Formula feeding is a safe and viable alternative and providers need to ensure mothers are informed about this without feeling guilty or inadequate. Moreover, healthcare providers should be proactive and supportive in developing appropriate feeding plans for each individual newborn and mother. This includes understanding the mother's preferences, her health, the baby's health and other relevant factors. One size fits all advice doesn't work here. Every mother-baby duo is unique and their feeding plan should reflect that. In healthcare settings, there's a pressing need for a more balanced conversation about breastfeeding and formula feeding. The focus should be on the best interests of the baby and the mother, rather than adhering to a rigid ideology. It's about time we move away from the breastfeeding versus formula feeding debate and instead promote an environment of understanding, respect and support for all feeding choices. Remember, there's no right or wrong when it comes to feeding your baby. What matters is that the baby is well nourished, thriving, and the mother is comfortable and confident in her choice. A mother's decision to breastfeed or formula feed should be supported and respected, not judged or criticized. In response to the intense focus on breastfeeding, the Fed is Best movement has emerged, advocating for informed and supported feeding choices for all mothers. Let's delve into the story of Dr. Christy del Castillo Hedgi, a physician who experienced firsthand the struggles associated with breastfeeding. Her newborn son suffered severe dehydration due to difficulties with breastfeeding, a situation that could have been avoided with access to adequate information and support around infant feeding options. This led to the genesis of the Fed is Best organization, co-founded by Dr. del Castillo Hedgi. The organization's mission is not to downplay the benefits of breastfeeding, which are indeed numerous. Instead, it seeks to balance the narrative, emphasizing that formula feeding is a safe and viable alternative when breastfeeding is not possible or sufficient. Fed is Best highlights that the pressure to exclusively breastfeed can lead to guilt and emotional struggles for mothers who, for various reasons, might not be able to produce enough milk. It's a scenario that is more common than we might think, yet it's often overlooked, leading to feelings of failure and distress for many new mothers. The organization also raises crucial awareness about the potential risks associated with exclusive breastfeeding, such as newborn jaundice and hyperglycemia. These are severe health concerns that can be mitigated with a balanced feeding plan, which might include supplementing with formula. Through its work, Fed is Best has sparked a critical conversation about the importance of feeding options for newborns. It encourages healthcare providers to closely monitor newborns and develop appropriate feeding plans tailored to each unique situation. In essence, the Fed is Best perspective is one of balance and inclusivity. It's about ensuring that all parents are equipped with the information they need to make the best feeding choices for their babies and themselves. It's about replacing judgment with support and guilt with empowerment. Every baby deserves to be fed and every mother deserves to make informed and supported feeding choices. The breastfeeding versus formula feeding debate is complex and multifaceted and it's crucial to continue the conversation. It's not about deciding which is superior, 
but understanding that each parent's journey is unique and deserves respect. We all have stories to share, experiences that shaped our decisions and perspectives. Perhaps you're a mother who found solace in breastfeeding, or a father who took charge of midnight formula feeds. Maybe you're a parent who struggled with breastfeeding, or found that formula feeding was the best choice for your family. Each of these stories is valuable, shedding light on the diverse realities of parenthood. In sharing our stories, we foster a sense of community. We encourage empathy, understanding and respect. We learn from each other, gaining insights that help us navigate the winding path of parenthood. It's through these conversations that we can dispel myths, challenge stigmas and empower each other. Remember, there's no one-size-fits-all approach to feeding your child. What matters most is ensuring your child is nourished and loved. So let's keep the conversation going. Your story matters. Let's continue to learn from each other and support each other in this incredible journey of parenthood.